Africa's death toll surged by 128 in the past 24 hours, the highest number reported in a single day. The death toll now stands at 2,657. Nearly 7,000 new COVID-19 cases have been reported, taking the total to more than 150,000. More than 73,000 people have already recovered, nearly 49% of those who were infected. 52 deaths have been reported in the Western Cape, 36 in Gauteng, 25 in the Eastern Cape, and 11 in KwaZulu-Natal, with Mpumalanga recording four deaths. Data now shows that 92% of those who've died since the start of the outbreak were older than 40 years. Well, COVID-19, uh, this morning on COVID-19, we're focusing on the virus that has taken a firm grip on the country. We start in the Western Cape, where at least 1,859 people have died. ENCA reporter Aisha Ismail is there. Aisha, very good morning to you. What's the situation on the ground? What it's like? I mean, the Western Cape still recording a huge number of cases every day. Good morning, Pradhan. That is indeed correct. And as you say, more than 1,800 deaths so far and over 60,000 confirmed infections. And of course, we're now heading towards our peak. It's the 1st of July today. And it's all systems go for the Western Cape Health um, Department and for health officials. They're going all out to try and convince people to adhere to COVID-19 regulations. Now, one of the main problems in the Western Cape is the fact that people are not taking up the offer from the health authorities to go and isolate and to go into quarantine. They've made isolation and quarantine facilities available. More than 4,000 Beds are available, but we've seen that only about a thousand of these beds have been um, taken up by people. But I'm also now joined by the director of health in this area. Um, and we, of course, now in Scottsdale. And Juanita, you in charge of this sub-district here. This is an area with a very high COVID-19 infection rate. What do you attribute that to? Well, um, this area is, um, unfortunately, doesn't have adequate housing and there's overcrowding. We would have a flat like one, the one we're standing next to with up to 20 occupants in that flat. Um, we often have, there's lots of backyard dwellers and informal settlements in this area. So overcrowding, I think, is one of our biggest challenges. And also unemployment. Unemployment is another contributor because people are forced then to go and look for work on a daily basis, even if they are positive and if they are not well, to try and find um, money to feed their families. And I think that's probably our biggest contributors in this area. The area is also, unfortunately, ridden with gang violence. Again, survival. Um, and, and so those are the challenges challenges that this community faces um, that makes it probably very really difficult to adhere to all the lockdown regulations and also to accept our offers for quarantine and isolation facilities. So that appears to be a very big issue and that is why the MEC for Health in this province, Noma French and Bombo, will be coming here today to try and convince people to take up these offers of, of um, the beds that have been made available for people to quarantine and to isolate because of course um, a lot of these infections come from high density areas as you pointed out earlier what are the main reasons for people not wanting to take up those um, that offer well there's, a, there's an array of reasons um, mostly the fact that people are able to, um, to, to, so they're not able to go and get their jobs that they usually get on a daily basis. So we call it peace work. So people go out to char, clean gardens, whatever they're able to do to feed their families. So the biggest thing is people can't eat if they don't work. And unfortunately, unfortunately um, a lot of people have that need. So they are concerned that if they go into the Q&I facilities, what happens to my family? Who feeds my family when I'm getting three meals a day at a quarantine and isolation facility? Um, people are also concerned about their belongings because um, sometimes their belongings get, belongings get looted while they are in for the for the period of time and then of course people aren't able to consume alcohol if they're going to quarantine and isolation facilities and that's probably a lesser um, issue that gets raised and then I think the big thing is we're a society where we, we want to be with our family we want to connect with our family and people feel very delinked from their family because they're not able to leave, they can't go anywhere, they have to be in the Q&I facility um, 
all the time. And so they are concerned about what about my children, what about my family members. So I think the concerns are, are real and there are legitimate socio-economic um, driven concerns that people have. Thank you so much for your time. Sure. So Bradan, it's, it's very interesting, um, you know, just coming here to Scottsdale and talking to people about why they are not taking up these quarantine and isolation facilities. And as we heard Juanita talking about the socio-economic impact that um, COVID-19 has had on poorer communities where people feel that they actually cannot go to the, these facilities because they still want to go and do a gardening job, go and do informal work so that they will still be able to earn a little bit of money to put food on their table. And that is exactly why Norma French and Bombo, the MEC for Health, is coming to this particular area to try and convince people to go into these Q&I facilities so that they can stop the spread of the coronavirus, especially as the Western Cape heads towards its peak. Aisha, please stay connected because we're going around the country this morning just to get a sense what's happening elsewhere. We've got Nobile uh, Majala here in Gauteng. She's out in Kempton Park in Ekuruleni. Then we've got Avi Wemtila in Ginsberg in the Eastern Cape. And we've got Tuba Litle Vilane, Tuba Vilane in Deben in KwaZulu Natal. And if you know your numbers, you'll know that the Western Cape is, is, is sort of leading with COVID 19 cases, followed by Gauteng. Then you've got uh, Eastern Cape and then KZN. So we'll try and get a sense there as well what's happening on the ground. Let's go to Kempton Park now with Mobile Mazala because Gauteng, of course, is number two on the list of COVID-19 cases that have been confirmed. And it is the country's economic hub. It's a hive of activity after lockdown restrictions were eased. The province currently is battling, of course, being winter with chilly temperatures. Mobile Mazala checking out some quarantine sites live now to us from Kempton Park, Ekuruleni. What's the situation there, Mobile? Well, Bradan, I can tell you now that uh, the people that will be walking us um, into the quarantine sites to sort of give us an idea of how ready they are in one of the busiest quarantine sites are ready. They're obviously behind me. You may not see them. They're a bit further down, but they are ready. They are dressed up and they're ready to show us. But of course, we know that the province is at the moment has reported about 6,000, over 6,000 cases. And we now sit at uh, over 42,000 cases which is obviously a worrying factor for, for health, but something that they say that they have under control. We have seen the private sector also chipping in, and we know that we have more than 10,000 beds, which was the first or the initial goal that the health department had. And now that we know that going forward, they're looking at about 15,000 beds, and that's something that they are working towards. But of course, with more active cases, that means that the manpower also may be infected and that's something that the Department of Health has continually said that they're looking into and that um, even though there are obviously there's a break of communication between the guys in the front line and one and, and the officials they're saying that there are issues with PPEs while um, the officials also saying that um, the PPEs are something that is, there's a big appetite for it, but it's definitely something that they have. But just joining me now is because obviously with the active cases, we're looking into the quarantine sites. I'm joined here by Dr. Zwane, who is in charge of some of the quarantine sites that we will be visiting. Um, Ma'am, will you please explain to us just how ready are the quarantine sites that we may be going into? Okay, the quarantine sites in Gauteng are really ready. They have been operational since the lockdown started. This is the first quarantine site that we're in, Transnet, SLN Park, we call it, that has been operational from the time when we received the repatriates to now when we're receiving everybody, including the locals. This is the busiest quarantine site and the most ready in, 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 in so far as the rooms the staff, the PPE and everything. We've never had any problem with this quarantine site. No fatality. We've had 99.9% .9 recovery and we're very active here. We'll be showing you the quarantine site as we go along. Obviously, I look forward to that. But just give us an idea of how many beds do you have? How many people can you get into some of these quarantine sites? Okay, the total number of beds that we have here is 400. We have 400 beds that we have here. We've been operational to date. We've accommodated approximately 920 
if I count from the time we started up till now, of course, we, we admit and discharge, as I've said, we've got a good recovery rate. We've got separated areas for the positives and the negatives. I'll talk to all the people under investigation. I will be showing you as we're going in. But definitely we've accommodated anything, any age from a three-month-old pregnant women, and we've got systems in place to care for all those. We are supported by the district to care for those. The daughters are here, the nurses are here. We do everything to make sure that everybody that comes here goes out here. here. We've got good stories that we can share with you as well. Thank you very much, Doctor. Dr. Zwane, they're just explain, explaining to us exactly how ready the quarantine site is as we obviously, the province looks forward to its peak that everyone has been talking about. I mean, you'll remember that even the Premier said that Gauteng is facing a storm. So as we head to the peak, we get a peak on what's happening in the quarantine site. Yeah, and, uh, please stay, stay connected for now, Mobile. Thank you very much. In Kempton Park, SLN Park, the Transnet facility there. Let's move now to the Eastern Cape where COVID-19 has claimed more more than 400 lives, one of the poorest provinces. Our reporter, ENCA, that's uh, Avi Wemdila, is there tracking the story and finding out how some of the most vulnerable are surviving. Avi, where you've been up and about in the Eastern Cape for some days now, I mean, the situation is not looking good as numbers are creeping up fast. Certainly not looking good, Brad, and even the Premier yesterday. Uh, just warning people to try their best to stay at home as uh, we're expecting the numbers to reach a peak now and uh, a boiling point. But if ever there was any good about this whole coronavirus pandemic, it's the good that we've been seeing from different people, Brad, uh, and different communities that have taken initiatives of uh, basically feeding the less needy and helping out the less needy however they can. I am in Ginsburg location now. That is, of course, the home of... Uh, of uh, apartheid hero Steve Biko and of course some good also has reached here. I am joined by one of those people that's been doing good here, uh, Soso Kiva. Soso, thank you for joining us at ENCA but can you just maybe quickly detail some of the initiatives that you've been uh, putting your hands into? Uh, but let me start by saying thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, after this uh, initiative uh, assisting other f the, f the families that are struggling from around King Williamstown in the villages called Omasele location and then what I did, I said, no, man, let me take this initiative to my, my village where I'm coming from, Debe Mahala location. Then uh, I, I posted something on Facebook and people responded positively. Then I took that initiative to create a WhatsApp group and I created rules for WhatsApp group and I draw a plan on how I'm going to do the, the, this, uh, this food parcels initiative. And then people bought it and people were keen and people were, 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 so, were so vibey about it. And what I told them is that each and every process will be transparent because we need to be transparent so that everything people must know. And then what I did, I said, no, uh, the base, it's the people who do not take, who will not get anything from the government. Let's assist those people because those people with, during this COVID-19, I'm sure they are struggling. We will let alone those who are getting anything. It's like a grand and stuff. And then... I called upon some of the guys outside. I would like to mention the likes of Teram Tembu, Babalom Tembu, or Zuko Makesha, and Those are the people who are not uh, part of our community, but they were willing to donate. It's not only them. It's plenty of them because what I, what I believe in, if you want something to, uh, you, to, 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 to go and become successfully, involve many people because out there there are people who are willing to help. And we did it on the 16th of May. We gave uh, 16 families, if I'm not mistaken, food parcels. I'm talking about the proper food parcels, the quality one, the one that I'm, I'm buying from my own house. And the second round, we dealt it during the... It, it was towards the end of May, and it was successfully. Mm -hmm. And then... Yeah. What I did, okay, thank you. I've, I've been seeing some of those initiatives myself and those bulky food parcels. I mean, as you mentioned, coming from sharks, players like Lubabalo, um, Teram, Tembo. But I just want to find out now, going forward, what's in line? Because this pandemic is still creeping up. Do you still have uh, any plans in life to help the communities around King Williamstown? Definitely, definitely we do have. Because uh, I sat down and said, no, man, this food parcel thing, it's it's like people who get food and then, then what? Now we need to, to check for some something else, something that is going to be a legacy for the community of Itabe Because there are people that are struggling, there are people who are living without a shelter. 
and we identified an elderly person who was above 60 years. And as we speak now, the construction will start on, the, uh, on this coming Saturday. And I'm happy that the people who are going to build this house are people from within my community. So we are not empowering on the other side and de-empowering on the other side. So the, 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 the assistance that we got from these people that, these people that I've mentioned before, it's, it was so wonderful. And uh, on the 18th of July, on the Mandela Day, we agreed that we wanted to do a, a, hand, a, a proper handing over. Uh, it, I know that during, because of the regulations of COVID-19, we won't have what we call it, hey, no, 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 but we will make sure that it's it, it within the standards. The reason why we want to do this and the, how I wish that it can be public so that the other communities, the other community members can see that it is happening. Let us help our people. We are government. Let us not point fingers on government. Let's assist one another with your 50 rand, with your 100 rand. You can manage to build a house. This is what is happening from the Demachala location. Uh, certainly uh, good initiatives there. Thank you, Soso Kiva, um, highlighting some of the initiatives that uh, he has personally been involved in, saying that we are government ourselves. We don't have to wait for government. You heard there uh, in the process of building a house uh, for an elderly lady going beyond uh, the bulky food parcel. Some of the heartwarming uh, initiatives that are happening in communities in the, around King Williamstown. I am in Ginsburg location at the moment where it's not only this initiative. I mean, I visited um, in locations like Equalin where they were doing similar initiatives, but then handing out those bulky food parcels uh, in wheelbarrows. A lot of good being done under coronavirus despite the challenges. Let's move on now to KwaZulu Natal. Uh, thank you very much, Avi Wemdile, then Ginsberg, uh, Steve Biko's uh, home. Let's go to KZN. They sit, uh, there's a province at number four accounting for about 6% of the current total of 151,000 positive cases. Now we know that among other areas. The national lockdown is having a huge impact on business and some people have been forced to retrench workers or even close down businesses completely. Now my colleague ENC reporter Tuba Little Vilani is speaking to some small business owners in Deben and he's been up and about this morning and he's joining us now live from Eteguini. Tuba, what have you been hearing? Yes, uh, thank you so much, Brad. And we've been around the city. We Earlier on, we spoke to uh, the small business owner who is owning the cleaning company. Now we're in Umlanga precinct. We're speaking to the gentleman that owns a saloon here. It's one of the busiest area. It's just behind the, the gateway shopping mall. Uh, for many, those uh, who want to do their hair, this is the place for choice. I'm going to speak to Sanel and who is the owner of this place. Babun Zaman, thank you so much for your time. You've been given a green light uh, last week to start operating. Just take us through uh, how um, difficult it was it for you in the past few months where you were unable to do anything, even to make a living, as we understand that salon, you only get paid uh, per customer that comes in. Uh, uh, so government so as long as in the past ten was a compiler, no teto begi was cut. Kunzima, Gubenzi Magmi, Nagobanzi Magbasabins, Abasabins, the Bengs, Sevens and Abo. Nabo, the Benga was we told him, in general, and Amga was we told her. Over emails, he told her in commission bases, Umu Sebenzile, Utolima, and Alice's cut, and put it for me, Nilan Lord, Givazuni Koshetana. Although he quelle, Dagoman, the champion was in pick up in what December or January next year. Private expense, then basing Kokela ne property, go eating a grand. So who couldn't the Makulu? We are Zama Manja and Gabona Bacona, Abawazilunga and Manja. Got a Gunjan by a figure in a Macastoman Yazuguti, Lendau, Ibinga is in Yazendau, Ezipizilla, Mtang. Uh, as a mayor, one and no man are feeble, Simo, a CSB business, or in footy or a manger now, my customer, my son, I fear. You would see a pume in Lini, 
as a masalun sis kote sis si azamu push. That was Sanel and Zama is telling us that uh, in the past few months he was struggling to make means uh, and means and even the, um, the staff that uh, works with him, uh, they also suffered a lot. Thank you very much, Chuba Villani. Well, we are now wrapping up and I'm going to go back to, to Cape Town, Gauteng and Eastern Cape and come back to you, Chuba, just for one last uh, hit on this as we take a look at what's happening around the country at this hour. Aisha, you said we are expecting Noma French Mbombo, the MEC of Health in the West Kent Cape shortly to come and engage with the people. From what you've gauged, are people willing to listen and behave accordingly on the ground in Cape Town? Barbara Dam, just as we came there, there was actually some gang violence. I mean, it's early in the morning and already people were running around saying that they've heard shots being fired and that did delay the MEC for health a little bit. Um, but she has arrived. She's engaging with health workers at the moment. But just before I go, Bradan, I'm now joined by the Western Cape Head of Health. And um, Dr. Keith Clutie, I want to ask you this question. Given the fact that people are not taking up the office to isolate and to quarantine, is there any legislation in place to compel people to isolate and quarantine? Uh, thank you, Aisha. Good morning to the viewers. There's no legislation specifically compelling people to do it. It is of public health importance that anybody that is positive and is a risk to others, that in protection of others, they are strongly advised from a public health perspective to not put others at risk and therefore to isolate themselves in isolation facilities or quarantine facilities. But at this point in time, there's no specific legislation that compels them to do so. You know, I must, I must be on Thank you so much. But Dan, so that was um, Dr. Keith Clutie, the head of health from the Western Cape government. And I see Norma French Mbombo has arrived. She is going to board what they call a red dot light taxi. And these taxis have exclusively been assigned to people to take them to quarantine and isolation areas. I guess the next time I speak to you, I'll be one in, uh, one in, on one of these taxis with Nova French Mbombo, where she will try and convince people to take up the quarantine and isolation beds provided for free by the Western Kelp Health Department. Okay, thank you very much, Aisha Ismail. As we conclude, let's come now here to Gauteng in Ekuret in Kempton Park. Uh, uh, Ngobile Madlala, you are going to be inspecting, so to speak, or visiting some of the quarantine facilities. Your sense, is counting really ready as well? Because we understand we are going to be peaking in the next few weeks. Well, at this point, Bradan, in, in terms of beds in hospital, um, we feel at this, I feel at this point that perhaps we need more, just like the MEC was saying, that maybe 15,000 may not be enough because at this point we are preempting a peak that we have not, be, have not seen. It's something new to us, and therefore we don't know the numbers that may come, but 15,000 is a great start. And as we go also into the quarantine site, we do know that there are a lot of um, locations that, um, that have been identified as high-density areas, which are some of our hotspots. So as to whether or not the number of active cases would be needing some assistance in the quarantine site, well then that will be based on the math. But we do know that there will be a number of people that will be needing these sites. But of course we will see more as we walk about and we see and we understand how it works. But the 14 days also remains an issue because in this case 14 days to clear means that's one person in the quarantine site for 14 days. But we will, of course, understand more as we do the walkabout with the doctors. Mobile Majala in Kempton Park, the SLN Park in Transnet. Let's quickly now go back to Ginsberg in the Eastern Cape. That's the hometown of uh, hero Steve Biko. Aviwe Mtila, people doing their bit to assist uh, those who are needy now. You spoke to one gentleman who's doing a lot to feed people. But other than that, when you walk around and you've been through the length and breadth of the Eastern Cape in the last few days, are people really adhering to the precautionary measures that are required? Very briefly. 
But then uh, you'd take a drive through towns like um, Tata, you'd go through your Lusikisikis, even King Williamstown. You understand, um, it's that crucial dates now, those Sasa payouts. You'd, you'd beg the question, what lockdown? People are out and about uh, like it's uh, any other day, like it's business as usual, Brad Dan. Really scary uh, for the Eastern Cape. Even the Premier yesterday just begging people to stay at home and adhere uh, to those lockdown regulations. But it's a matter of um, the stomach, Brad Dan. Now, in speaking to some of these people, they'll tell you that uh, their livelihoods, they depend on being out and about. They've got nothing at home, essentially. Some of those uh, uh, social grants pay out people, uh, those Sasa recipients will tell you that their groceries are already depleted, so they, they go out uh, in droves, essentially, uh, during this time, because they've got nothing at home already, even though government um, they, they is trying, in some instances, in terms of putting out chairs now, uh, after um, we've been here for the last two months. But um, government still has a lot uh, to do in terms of getting people to stay at home. And we heard from the Premier that the numbers are going to spike in the Eastern Cape at the moment. And even the uh, education MEC they, um, saying that they need to have contingency plan, thinking of not going back to school grade R's to grade 11's um, from the 6th of July, rather going back uh, in mid-August sometime, just to uh, prevent the surging numbers that you're seeing in the education system as well. A lot of challenges indeed. Finally, Tuba Vilane in Deben, you're speaking to small business. Times are tough and it's a matter of the stomach. As we hear from Avi Mtila, people really not adhering that much to lockdown regulations because they need to survive and businesses, especially small businesses, are battling. That's the sense you've got this morning in Eteguini. Tuba? Yes, uh, Pratan, it's, it's, very, it's been very tough to small business owners here around Eteguini, as you had Sanele telling us that um, for the past few months he wasn't able to make any money. Even the place where he's working is owing the landlord and he's only hoping that he will only be able to pick up uh, towards the end of the year. That's only when he will be able to pay uh, the, the money that is owing here. But beside that, uh, Praten, we will be uh, driving around the city. We're still going to speak to uh, people like Maxim Tati, uh, the owner of Max's Lifestyle in Umlazi. We also hope to get the MEC for Economic Development in the province, Umamono Musa Dube to tell us the plan, the, the provincial government plan, in trying to assist small business uh, in this province. Earlier on, she told us that uh, they, there is a plan that they are going to present in, in the legislature that will be focusing more on small businesses and reviving the economy of the province. Thank you very much. Uh, Tuba Vilani Eteguini in Deben, Aviwe Mtila in Ginsberg in the Eastern Cape, Aisha Ismail in Cape Town, and last but not least, Mubile Majala in Kempton Park. Thank you very much, colleagues, giving us a sense of what's been happening in those different parts of the country as we slowly approach uh, day 100. Remember, this coming Saturday is going to be 100 days since the lockdown here in the country. So today on ENC, we're trying to find out exactly across the length and breadth of the country what is the situation on the ground covering different angles.